Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be reading Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through to 17. And this is about Jesus healing on the Sabbath. He, speaking of Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. Now, once again, I, I always want to bring this out before I get too far here. Jesus could have. Think about what he could have said. Think about what he could have done. He could have said right at the very beginning of his ministry, right from the very beginning, he could have said, okay, you guys, okay, you're my 12 disciples. You guys, we're going to start a church. And we're going to call it, you know, whatever, yet such and such a church. And we're going to meet every Sunday. And, and, and you guys are the 12, well, I'm going to make you the 12 deacons. Or I'm going to make you the 12 elders of my church. And I'm going to be the pastor. He didn't say that. Nor did anybody in the book of Acts say that. Nor did anybody in the first century church say that. The original, the original Christianity is found and based in the synagogues, the Jewish synagogues, okay? I mean, that just throws a lot of your heads in a spin, but that's the truth. Don't skip over this and just kind of, oh, you know, let's really meditate upon this. Let's think about this. Jesus wasn't, wasn't teaching in a church. He could have started a church and could have done anything. He didn't. He went to the Jewish synagogue. He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. Verse 11, behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, a, sp a spirit of weakness, 18 years. She was bent over and could in no way straighten herself up. When Jesus saw her, he called her and said, woman, you are freed from your infirmity. He laid his hands on her and immediately she stood up straight and glorified God. Well, I glorified God too if I saw that, and especially if I received it. Verse 14, the ruler of the synagogue being in, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. Can you imagine? The ruler of the synagogue was angry because Jesus healed on the Sabbath as if it was, you know, against God's will and word to do this. No. So the ruler said to the multitude, there are six days in which men ought to work. Therefore, come on those days and be healed, but not on the Sabbath day. You see, now this is this is the typical thing when it comes to in every religion, you can almost every everybody everywhere, even in non-religious circles, even in places like work, okay, where people just like to lord it over other people. People just like to um make extra rules, make it a little bit extra hard for people. Just 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 to make you know, make an extra, just make it extra hard for somebody, you know, just kind of lord it over them. Just we'll show him who, you know, we'll show so-and-so, we'll show them who rules this roost, you know. It wasn't this whole idea of not healing on the Sabbath. It's, it wasn't done out of goodwill, really. I mean, it was done just because someone just liked making extra rules and extra policies. And we see this in corporate circles. We see this, in, you know, in workplaces. And we see this at pretty much everywhere you go. People just like to make extra policies, extra rules, because the natural inclination of people is just like, well, I feel better if I can just kind of make a rule that kind of over you, you know, and make a rule that would be used against somebody else. So can you imagine? The ruler of the synagogue was angry. Verse 15. Therefore the Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Doesn't each one of you free his ox or his donkey from the stall on the Sabbath and lead him away to water? Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound 18 long years, be freed from this bondage on the Sabbath day? As he said these things, all his adversaries were disappointed, and all the multitude rejoiced for the glorious things that were done by him. Now, one thing you got to realize is that Jesus never Yeshua never broke the Sabbath day. Never did he violate the Sabbath day. 
He knew that what he did was right in line with God's will, word, and his heart for the people, okay? That is why we see in other parts of Scripture where he, Jesus, he, um, he asked some of these religious rulers, you know, you know, is it good to do, to, is, it, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil on the Sabbath day? You know, because sometimes you come to a fork in the road where you got to either do good or do evil. Sometimes you're faced with a situation like he just, for example, we're talking about just animals. Like if a, if a donkey fell into a big, huge pit. So you're faced with a situation. The donkey needs out. The donkey is thirsty. The donkey needs water. The donkey might die if we don't get it out tonight, today. So what do you do? You either do good and get the donkey out or you do evil and just let it sit there and die. Okay? Same with this woman. This woman needed to be healed. What was the ch- what were the choices here? Either heal her now or you know, that's doing good obviously, or doing evil, which is just let her stay in her crip, you know, let her be crippled. Just let her just let her go and, and let that evil thing just, you know, rule in her life. So again, you gotta understand that Jesus never violated the Sabbath at all. Never did. It's impossible for him to. And if he did violate the Sabbath, that would make him a sinner. And if he was a sinner, he would not be a savior. He would be a spotted lamb, not a spotless lamb. Okay? So all he did was he just brought uh, clarification and he brought correct interpretation, correct you know, interpretation of the of God's law in the full context of the scope of Scripture. Because a lot of people they just they just focus on this one little verse, or they focus on this one little passage, or this one little uh, this one little chapter. You know, this one little thing. You know, don't work on the Sabbath. Where Jesus is like, no, take the full scope of Scripture. It's like it's like Satan coming to Jesus and tempting him with using you know Scripture, using Scripture. You know, throw yourself down for it is written. It is written, you know, uh, he, God will bear you up, you know, by his angels. His angels will bear you up lest, he, lest you dash your foot against a stone. But Jesus is like, oh, no, you don't cherry pick scriptures around here. You go by the full entire scope of scripture. It's also written, okay? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. So it's very important to take it all, not just a little bit here, a little bit there, use this to override that, use that to override this. That's what Jesus came to fight. That's what Jesus came to to fight against and to defeat these people who override Scripture with other Scripture. God's not like that. He he doesn't have multiple personalities against each, you know, and they're all against each other. And it's not like the old God from from the old ancient ways was like this, but the new God is like that. That's heresy. That is satanic. That's evil. That's Martianism. That's what Martian did, okay? So, as you go your way, think about what we've talked about, and don't forget to check out the other videos. We're we're talking about so much, so much good, what I call little gold nuggets of spiritual truth. Gold nuggets of spiritual truth. So, as you go your way, may God enlighten the eyes of your understanding and bless you a abundantly and show you great and mighty things in the name of Yeshua. Amen.